I think it's easier. Okay. Okay, you wanted to go back to this one or this one? Okay. And, okay. Education is similar, um, but there's an opportunity to educate your clients on the buying and selling process. So an example of that would be um, walking them through the appraisal or walking them through what a home inspection is like. Um, what would be some other things you'd want to educate your clients on or educate people on? Can you think of anything? Yeah, costs, um, the kind of the prep, I guess, right, for listing your house, um, timeline, those kind of things, right? Um, we do a lot of assuming in real estate, but specifically with education, if our clients don't know, um, they're not in the real estate industry, most likely, or they may be in a similar industry but they also don't, they don't do this that often, right? Unless they're consistently buying investment properties. So I remembered, I, my time from when I sold my house to when I bought my last house was seven years. And I was like, it's like, I just did it all over. I didn't even remember. Yeah. I like that. I like adding that to this. So navigating buying and selling process is one bullet point. Educating them on the benefits of being a homeowner is a great bullet point to add to that. Okay. Trending. I might pull in Jake because he's trending. I don't know. You're just always trending. Okay. Do you want to stay relevant? You need to be the one that starts the conversation that breaks the news. When have you learned something on social media and you've repeated it like it's like your own knowledge? Like, did you know that this, and you just keep like repeating it? Well, you have that opportunity to be the one that breaks the news, right? on your client or on your profile. So anything that is trending, yes, trending could mean anything. Um, if there's a big announcement from like the housing industry, if there's something with rates, those are always kind of buzz things, but um, they don't have to necessarily be in relation to the market, but you just wanna stay up with the trends. Yeah. Yeah. So my suggestion would be because everything kind of is done in a 30 day data piling. Um, your client is going to see, I like to source information, but I wouldn't put on the top this is December's market update. They're like, thanks, Dailies. It's February 4th. You know, but that, that is actually what will happen. So the headline is going to be, okay, Salt Lake has the number one growth market as of December 2021. You know, like if we don't have any current data, I'm going to make that not as apparent on the page. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's the takeaway, right? Um, one thing I missed on trends that I just um, I wanted to add because I wasn't on these single slides. Um, these new home programs simplify it, right? So again, you might get a graphic that's like, oh my gosh, like this and the DTI and the LTV and the whatever. And your client's like, what? So um, that's an opportunity to get on a story. Oh my gosh, she's making me get on video. I, I'm leaving. Some, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but just getting on, talking about, this just came out. This is what it means. Call me. Let's let's meet. Let's break down how that what that means for you. That could take thirty seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, I just add. I added. Make it genuine. So. That's like the everything with this, right? Be yourself. Don't be like, oh my gosh, I got to be this person. Usually that never in any, in our business, in our life, it never turns out. <laughs> it's good just to be ourselves. Okay. So this is my soap. There's a soapbox right here and I'm getting on it. Oh, okay. Tell your story. So this is that personal side of social media. I have had so many conversations with people about this and they're either like, well, no one cares about my personal life. It's just about real estate. Or they're like, oh, I don't want to talk about real estate. I'm going to annoy the ever living out of people. Right? So there's kind of two sides. So isn't your real estate career part of your story? Isn't your hobby part of your story? What hobby? Okay, we can work on that. It's fine. <laughs> Isn't your family a part of your story? How many icebreaker conversations, Shirley, do you have about Penelope, the pot belly pig that lives at your house? A lot. Yeah. Priscilla's there now. <laughs> yeah. But it's those things that sometimes we go, okay, we like to compartmentalize. I do it. I have, you guys, I had eight baby showers because I was like, these are my work friends. And these are my friends from high school. And these are my friends from Orange Theory. And these are my, and I'm like, hey, I think like other humans can interact with each other. It's totally fine. I'm a compartmentalizer. Are you like laughing because you relate? Because I'm like, I just, then I have to like try to get you guys to know each other. And I shouldn't even be concerned about that. So anyways, don't compartmentalize. We're going to tell our story. So does that sound better? Does that like sound easier to swallow that rather than share your personal life on social media, telling your story, does then that sound better? So you don't have to be like, hey, this is my TED talk. I just have these, I had feelings today. Like we're not saying that you can, but we we're not i'm not telling you to do that i am saying like think of what people you haven't seen in a while say to you when they run into you so think about the last time you ran into somebody that hadn't seen you in a while i will give my example oh my gosh like you've been running so much oh my gosh this oh my gosh like you seem like you love your job i get that all the time so that just, that's what I'm telling 
other people tell me what story I'm telling. If someone comes up to you that hasn't seen you in a while, I mean, yes, there is a small percentage of people that aren't on social media. So I'm not saying it's for everybody, but if people are like, what have you been doing? Oh, you're in real estate. Oh, oh, you moved. Oh, you, you know, that surprise action that you get more than the, Hey, how's that going? How's that new job going? Like, how is that? How was your trip? You'll know if you relate to one or the other, you'll kind of know if you're already telling your story a little bit or not. And sometimes when people say that my the limiting belief brain goes, oh my gosh, I'm being so annoying. I need to like calm down. I probably talk about it too much. Oh my gosh. It's, but then I just tell that part of my brain to be quiet. So does your audience know what you like to do for fun? Do they know anything about your family? Do they know your family members' names? It's so nice to be able to say like, Michon, how's Larry doing? I'm using you as an example because I know you personally, I know you don't talk about him on social media, but like example, right? More than like, how's your, like, what? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> um, so that's what I want you guys to do. Watch what people who haven't seen you in a while say when they run into you. Okay. I'm literally going to make you repeat this. I will not be a secret agent. Who feels like they're maybe being a secret agent? Don't let anybody know. I am not like, they don't put me on those panels, right? You guys have been in a team meeting. It's not like, and Kimber's here to tell you how to sell real estate. I'm definitely um, more of a passive real estate seller. However, um, I have a transaction right now that's three and a half million dollars. It's it's crazy. And the other transactions that I did last year, they only came because those people that referred it to me knew I was actively selling real estate. Was I closing a transaction every month? No. So you might say, fake news, you weren't actively selling real estate. I was actively talking about real estate. So it, I wasn't in that category of, does she like, did she renew her license? Does she even still have a license? Was she an agent? She did that announcement like, yeah, I got my license. And then I haven't heard from her or she's been doing it forever, but like, I'm not top of mind. Right. So we're not going to be a secret agent because even if we aren't actively prospecting, which we are, but even if we were just like not doing anything, which is kind of me. Okay, that's me. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm doing other things. Other things are my big pillars. And I am getting real estate referred to me because I am not a secret agent. So this is the minimum requirement right here. And you've promised, you said out loud. Okay, home design tips, all the pretty things. I think it's great aesthetic to add to your social media. Um, I don't think it has to be the focus by any means. You do not have to be a real uh, home designer. I think somebody thought that one at one point. And a lot of people get into real estate because of HGTV. It's a thing, right? Um, so I just say, this is a great supplemental pillar for your business, right? Like here's how you fluff a pillow with the chop in the middle, you know, I don't know. Um, but the, I want Jake to kind of, I'm going to put him on the spot, but branding helps you gain traction and is an icebreaker for your business. I'm going to use be heard as an example. Okay. So their successful real estate team here. They are so good at telling people why they do what they do. They aren't too real estate in your face. So if you go just like follow their social media, their branding and kind of what they talk about and they have like a, a hero club that's kind of like their VIP referral club, they drive that a lot. All of that is part of their branding and it helps be an icebreaker because people really are buying them 
they're not like, oh my gosh, like, I mean, I would say this if he's, if he was in here, they're not like Brian Hurd is the best real estate agent in the entire world. Like no one can sell real estate better than him that he knows that's not true, right? Anybody, we're not trying to sell to the people that just need it. We're trying to sell to the people that believe what we believe. So branding kind of ties into that. Do you have anything to add to branding or does anyone have any like questions or thoughts? I don't feel like I was super eloquent in delaying that. This is the content and brand director of Keller Williams Salt Lake County. So not to put him on the spot. Oh, Brittany. As far as branding, I feel like it also has to do with your niche. Um, so dailies, for example, her niche is investments. So in your branding, I would highlight the investment side of it all. Um, it's whatever they're coming for. Are they coming for the design tips? Are they coming for the investment tips? Um, you know. And what they come for isn't always why they stay, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. They may just know you, and then they, like, actively follow you because you're very engaging. I'm not the right person to talk about this part that I'm going to say because I am a perfectionist and do like things to be clean. Okay. But it's not always the aesthetic. It's more of the content. Um, the What's really popular now is the realism of they're not perfect people. They're a cool mom like me idea um, on social media of hair in a messy bun. They're not wearing makeup probably, or who knows what their life is like, but they're not putting on a show. You're going for the content that they're giving, um, which is sometimes just entertainment or tips, or this is how I got them to eat vegetables. You know, it just depends on how they want to brand themselves of not a perfect person, but you're there for the content that they're providing. I love that. Um, if we have time, I'm going to play that TikTok that you sent last night, because I think how she relays that as far as content is a good message. Okay. So I just said exactly what Jake said. It doesn't matter what you post and the perfectionists in here are like, hold on, you lean against something. Um, it does matter that you are consistent. So this is where we're talking about the next step of like how we're going to improve our whole thing, social media present, presence. We're going to be consistent. So last quote from Simon Sinek, it's those that start with why that have the ability to inspire others, right? So the reason why I started with that video is if you went home and said, okay, what are my action items for today? I think we kind of all know why we do something. And if I just went and asked Kennedy right now, she'd be like, hold on, oh my gosh, like it's hard to like quickly articulate. However, um, and Simon Sinek says this when he's training people of how to find their why is actually asking other people like what it is that about them. Like, what is it about me that you, that you, not you like about me. There's probably a better way to say that. I'm like, Dailies, what do you like about me? But it helps you kind of relay where you're valuable to other people in the world. And it's so hard for us to identify that for ourselves. So if you want to go through the whole project of doing that for yourself, it's uncomfortable, but you can. Um, also reaching out to a peer and saying, you know, as a real estate agent, like what value do I provide? And they'll help you say like why you stood out so much, you know? Um, and then you can kind of start with that why. Okay, so we're gonna blaze through this because I wanna show you content, but, um, and you guys are gonna have this slide deck too in the link. So create content in time blocks, just because creator mode, and you guys are gonna have templates, but creator mode is a different mode. It's a different mode than lead gen mode. 
than family mode, then I'm distracted mode, whatever, right? So create content in time blocks that allow for that. So when no one is there to watch my kids, that's going to be the worst time to create content for me, right? Um, if they're with my nanny or at the park, that's a great time for me to create content. Calendar your posts and schedule. Um, simple as, again, you notice I didn't say, okay, on Tuesday at three is the most effective for the algorithm. It's like, I don't know if I'm that person. Um, I could definitely give you advice on it, but really we're just talking about consistency, right? So if I post every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 a.m. or every Tuesday and Thursday at three, great, cool. But, but like do it. And then have stories active. You don't have to have the stories where it's like, dee, 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 dee. they're so tiny and there's a million. But if you don't have any stories active, I'm, only, I'm one generation. There's um, somebody younger than me, Jake, <laughs> um, attest to this. But stories shows me if someone's active on social media. To me, I'm 35. As a younger person, does that show you someone's active on social media? Is that a part of the, you showing that's active on social media? It's not really a optional feature as much anymore is what I'm saying. It's not like, well, I don't do stories. Well, yeah, you should. <laughs> Even if it starts out with you sharing your post on a story, right? Brittany? If we're recording, I just I think it depends on how one, okay, hold on. You want okay, to, no. no. So uh even I, I just changed my mind. I was gonna okay. say it depends on the type of creator. So a videographer may not be posting pictures, they're posting videos. Um, a photographer may not be posting videos or posting pictures. Um, congratulations. When you're on social media, you get to be both. And even though it's not your profession, it is now. <laughs> um, but you're, you're not selling that as a service is what I'm saying. Um, as far as each feature, whether you're posting something in the feed or you're posting a story or you're posting a video reel or anything um that's just a way to collect something that you're sharing so any way you share it should be on all of those things I, is anything i'm saying making sense follow-up questions please okay <laughs> Brittany. okay so this is one of my questions so i've been on facebook for I don't know, more than a decade, but I've only been on Instagram since I've been a real estate agent. And what I see is that uh, there's a lot of people out there posting to get other people to follow them that are not their friends. They just want exposure. And I don't, I don't see a lot of interaction from actual friends that are outside their professional relationships. In other words, we'll take something like cake design, okay? Mm -hmm. You'll see a ton of other bakers on there supporting that baker, and in turn, that baker is supporting them. And they might have their mom comment or their sister, but I don't see half of Utah Valley commenting on that cake design. Does that make sense? Right. And so I'm trying to understand the value that, I mean, I don't disagree that people's content is valuable. I don't disagree that people even want the content. What I am struggling with is how do you get people in your social influence and your sphere to actually see that content as valuable if you want them to engage more. Right. Like, and, and be, B, 
be engaged that isn't another another real estate agent. Like I see so many real estate agents supporting other real estate agents. <laughs> so it's not really an idea. It's a friend of mine just reached out to me um, and she just created a group, uh, a group text. And she said, hey, you know, I put here all different tops, types of business owners. So in that group, there is someone who makes homemade bread and the other one has an Airbnb in Orlando and the other one makes like bracelets for your for I uh, for your Apple watches. And we are all different types of businesses. And now we created um, a group where we all comment every day on each other's pages. And what does that bring? Well, it's telling Instagram that there's comments there. We're saving stuff. Sometimes we, we share stuff on our stories because she's not my competition. She's another business owner that wants vision too. So I can say, hey, check out this really cute Airbnb in Orlando for you to stay there. And so and so. So we created this and that's we're sharing that. And that's going to help bring like people because people who see my stories and see her Orlando Airbnb in there might start following her and might be to start commenting on her page. So that's a way to do it. You're not going to want to do it with people in this room because I don't think we're going to be sharing each other's things on our on our stories. But you can do that with local people that you know or people, business owners Vendors that you have affiliate. in your life. Doesn't it? I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's showing that I have, if you look at my post from two weeks ago, there's like one, two comments. Some of those are spam people like, hey, DM me for or like put this on this page. But now this week, you're going to see real pages, real people commenting on it. And that to me helps a little bit. What I would say is, well, to go off what she was saying about that um, group is uh, even just starting a group. So you have your investor group, which is difficult because there's other real estate agents involved in it. So it's very beneficial as far as growing your business. Um, I want to give the example of Tina from Sweden. She has um, or I don't know if she started it or she's a part of a Sweden's in the US um, Facebook group. And she is, I'm assuming the Utah realtor for that group as well as there's probably someone in California or Missouri as the realtor for those states per se. And there may be competition between them, but there's a, it's a big state in any state. Um, so if you can find a group that you can be that realtor for them and then you become friends and then they see this person they are they're not just a realtor but they're an active realtor um another thing is a reason why people of like you gave the example of bakers that they comment and engage with themselves is because you're collaborating in an indirect way with your following so someone else can get in one of their followers can be like, oh, here's another person. Wow, they're talented as well. Um, and then in return, the same. So they're collaborating with their own following to grow each other's. Um, and it could be that one has 50,000 and one has 5,000, but some of those 5,000 aren't following the 50,000 as vice versa. So there's benefits to both and the number of followers don't always matter right to me what's important is not how many followers i i so, want to know right, how many right, people right. are going to actually as, work with me as far as the engagement aspect is what is your call to action so you could be posting a lot of information and it's just like oh cool keep scrolling that was that was good info but i don't need there's no need to comment if you're asking a question maybe they're more engaged to comment um if i were to look at a news article i wouldn't be like, wow, that is so interesting on their comments. Wow. I would share it to someone and say, this is so interesting. Um, so if you're engaging with your audience, so someone comments and you comment back or they're commenting with each other, um, those are the kind of engagements that you want, but you want to start the conversation. That's where the comments come in. Um, 
that's something that um, is the last step I have on there is like make a goal for complete connection. So that's actually something that um, I keep bringing them up, but I just feel like I know the most about their team. So be heard. They'll have a specific goal around complete connections on social media every day. They don't count as your touches. Um, I can email you this stuff if you if you have to jet. Um, they don't count as touches, right? So like if you have a 36 touch, it's not like, but I talked to them on social media. So that's one. Then I call, like, yeah, you're totally fine. So um uh complete connections. And that means like, and you'll see it if you're friends with anybody on the Be Heard team on social media, like you'll get it where Brian will comment on something like, oh, that's so awesome that you like, you know, or something kind of witty so that it, it elicits a response. Um, or he'll send somebody a message saying like, hey, just thinking about you. There's obviously systems that will do like a bot version of that. But I think um, even just going, okay, I'm going to make four complete connections today. Reaching out to somebody or commenting on something they're doing doesn't getting likes and comments. I know we're all ruined because of social media, but that feels good, right? That keeps those people top of mind. Um, Emily doesn't really do social media anymore, but I remember she was always so good about that. She would time block social media time and she would make sure that she scrolled through. So if our agents were like, hey, I just got this under contract or hey, I just, you know, like my husband got a raise or something like that. It's like, she was always making sure she commented on as much as possible. That complete connection of getting the two-way conversation going should be part of your goal to kind of add to that. So put a number on it though. Don't just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm engaging with people. It's like, if I want to share and start a conversation about inf an information graphic that I saw, I'm glad you brought that up because some of those articles about the housing market, maybe I have my three or four fence sitters. I'm going to go and like copy that and direct message them and be like, Hey, I know that we've talked about like you being in or out. This is a great combo that we should have. Like this article just came out. Like let's meet at Starbucks this week. When can you meet at Starbucks this week? When can you meet at Swig? Swig doesn't allow you inside, so you're not meeting there. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to show you this. When you guys scan the QR code that I'm going to put up at the end, it's just going to pull up this Google Drive. Not, not nothing cute. Just a list of designs. So you're going to fill in your story stuff, right? Like your what's going on in your life, all that good stuff. These are some of those pillars we talked about. So here's a template for what's happening in the market. Here's a template for current design trends. Best of SLC or any city, right? Holiday, Valentine's. I just put Valentine's because that's the holiday right now. Um, listing inventory. I gave you a link for that. Market update, just the last 30 days. Client testimonial, a quote. Jake's really good about that, sharing a quote every week. Um, market update for the FMRM, WFRMLS. Sorry, I had to say that slow. And then driver resource or tool. So I shared a couple of these on my stories um, last night. So driver resource or tool, um, I think is a huge missed off opportunity because I never see agents at KW or otherwise share their home search app. Like they just don't, it's not a thing. Agents are just like, I think we just go, well, they're going to look at Zillow anyways. It's like, well, what if we can redirect some of that behavior? Because on your KW app, you can see what people are doing. So I just created a template that's like, hey, you, yes, you stop scrolling through Zillow. And Zillow is like a buzzword annoying, but it is. So positive or negative, it's a buzzword. So I'm just kept it on there. It's branded. It has my link because I can share links on stories. So there's a resource or tool, right? Um, so there's a couple of ideas. And then up at the top, 
there's a link to Outfront. So Outfront is KW's digital magazine. I definitely don't follow the calendar like verbatim. I think they have great ideas. So every month, Outfront will post a here's ideas for your social content calendar. So this month, yes, you have a good framework from what we've talked about in this class. Um, and every month you're just gonna, you can come in here and this just gives you an idea. Okay, February 3rd, it's Black History Month. February 4th, talk about making reservations for Valentine's Day. February 5th, you're the local expert, share a graphic. So yeah, yeah. I discovered recently, I think it was on the Facebook KW Command, um, but there's smart plans for this that they've, somebody's taken the time to take this from out front, put it in a smart plan. In fact, I was supposed to start it. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, and it has the reminder of the steps and then so, like, so it'll actually put it in your command tasks. And so, yeah, I thought that was super cool. I just realized I haven't logged in to check on my tasks. <laughs> so you could, you could do that. You could jump in here. You could, I just, I like to not have a blank canvas. That's my rule. I'm like, don't make me look at a blank wall. Like add four things and then I'll fill in the rest. So this is my, where I start. But if I'm like, um, maybe I think that this is not a good one, then I won't post it. Um, get your followers excited for a listing. Um, that's a cool one. The quote I did was off of um, the, in the graphic was off of this idea. There are a lot of things out of your control, but there are many in your control too. Tell your followers about what you do to feel confident and powerful. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it, right? So the quote I think that I put, put on here, let's just, let's just look at this bad boy. So when you click on it, see how it shows a template was created by Kimber? and you just click use template, now that's in your Canva. So I just Googled what's a courage quote because it talked about that and, it, and I found this one, courage starts with showing up and letting ourselves be seen. And then I just put my Instagram handle right there. So, yep. So you're not like, I'm not seeing like, oh, like cool. 20 people that I talked to like have now have opened up a template and it's taking up my Canva. It just makes a copy. It's like, I never know if you did it or not. Yeah. Um, sorry, really quick. And then um, client testimonial. Again, that's just a template. So use the out front as a guide. And then over here on sheet two, this link. So I'm going to pull up the... Um, I'm gonna pull up the QR code for this document, but this link is just the presentation. So if you need to go back on some of those key points. And then these are just some of those pillars that are gonna help you. If you're like staring at the wall, like what do I post? Try to hit one of those pillars. And the last thing I would say is regardless of how consistent and dis designed and methodical, the more that you can make all of these posts um, scheduled and planned out, the more you can just be organic and not so like worried about social media, right? Because you know, at minimum, if I'm just not feeling it this week, at least I know Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's something going out. It's getting posted and I haven't, I need to try it, but I bet if you sat down for two hours, if you didn't get too like overanalyzed, you could probably get these 10 pieces done. Yeah. Yeah, so again, not the authority on algorithm, but businesses, as far as like exposure and posts and when they show up, they just don't show up in people's feed as much. Is that fair to say? Business content.
Yeah. And it's not, it, it's not necessarily redundant by any means. Like it's, yeah, but just doing it on personal following, they don't even know you have a business page. Yeah. Yeah, so I, that's what I do because um, I just, I, I feel like people see the personal one more. There's probably like the Facebook algorithm guy that could come up here or girl and just be like, yes, that is true, Kimber. But I just, it's like a feeling where I'm like, no one likes any, like when we post on our business pages, no one likes anything. But if someone posts something personally, like if I post something and I'm like, oh my gosh, my agent is amazing. I'm so proud and tag them. It's like, whew, there's like tons of comments and likes. So. Yeah. First off, gross. Cats. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes. I love my cat. We're equal opportunity animals around here, Patricia. not surely. Real, real estate is different, a different kind of business than like a construction business or a dental a office. A CPA. <laughs> like you're, you're the business. Um, so to know that you're a real person is really important. And what's important to you may be important to someone else. Like there's people's niches of like politics. Um, someone's very heavy into politics. And then everyone's like, I'm going to work with that like-minded person. Or someone could be like, I love cats. Let's find a home for my cats with you. I don't know. that allows pet. I personally like, I'm selective about what I share on my personal. So everything that I share on my personal doesn't go on a business page, but a lot of it does. So I wouldn't necessarily be like, post, share, post, share, but it's going to be a pretty good representation yeah. of my personal page. It just depends on the user as well. Like, yeah, and what are me. you sharing? Some people don't want to show their newborn babies or yeah, children are, can be a sensitive subject. Um, you know, yeah. it, it really just depends. And I always get permission if it's someone else's child. <laughs> and he's like, I'm the police. <laughs> he's the marketing police. Legally. <laughs> really? <laughs> Um, do you guys have any questions about this sheet? Yeah, so I'm going to pull this up. So you guys will have a copy of this presentation. Um, I want you to scan this right now, though, because then you won't have that initial like into the free. Once you scan this, you'll have the Google Doc that has the, and hopefully it works. That's where we're at today. I haven't tested it yet. Yes. Yeah, so those are going to be, they basically cover the pillars we talked about. So if you're doing like two posts a week that really are more graphic than two, four, six, eight, so you're a little bit more than covered as far as the whole month. 
for the, the four weeks. Um, that's your, like kind of your consistent content. And then what's the filler you'll notice on here, there's nothing of tell your story template. That's the like, Natalie, if you love weightlifting, you need to start telling us. I mean, I will point out um, uh, who is like the person that I'm just like, I know I make fun of him, but we're just, I mean, Brian Hurd's going to be mad about how much I talked about him in this thing, but he always, he purposely posts like when he wears like Eddie Bauer stuff because he knows he's like putting himself in like a category of like, I'm 40 <laughs> and I wear Eddie Bauer. And so I make fun of him, but he, everyone else makes fun of him too. And so he gets comments about it. And so guess what he continues to do? He does it. And I think that's genius. Yes. Yeah. Telling people, um, what like pastimes that you have, um, sports that you play yeah, like if you have a bunch of toys and you someone needs a three-car garage because they agree <laughs> everything relates to a home yeah it just makes you more approachable because i mean we don't love going up to somebody and not having anything to talk to them about like being present on social media gives like us the icebreaker and it really helps at least for because i'm in nick's coaching program the first thing that you do in a meeting is build rapport. And so just start on social media because then it shows that you really do like have those emotions and you're not just saying it to agree with them or make yourself relatable. It's like, no, I am that person and you can, there's proof. So. Okay, any other questions? Are you gonna show that video? Oh yeah, you can leave. I want to make sure everyone has the QR code, but does everyone have it? Different scan it. Okay. Yes. I'm going to, because one, I love her and two, you're right. It is perfect. So long-term, I think it's going to be great that it will evolve into this is, this is what Natalie's page looks like. These are kind of like the presets that she has. These are the colors that she likes. And I would say, don't put any importance on it right now. Otherwise you'll go, I have to create a brand and I have to have it. I have to do this. Yes. Um, I think that it's good to evolve through the process. I mean, honestly, this class, so this is the second month that I've taught the technology marketing classes. And I'll notice that the third class is always like, oh, okay, like the me like my messaging is tied in, like, and I teach that class three times, and then it's like a new subject. So um it's the same thing. It's, it doesn't get better because the time passed, it got better because I did it three times. So it's just going, you're going to get more consistent of, and then you'll start to see the reactions that you get elicit more of the behavior you're going to put out or the more of the posts. I always answer questions longer than they need to be answered. Okay. Please stop deleting content that doesn't do well. I am begging you, please stop from one creative person to another. 
People need to see the natural ebb and flow of creativity, of engagement, of inspiration by you removing and hiding that video off your feed so it just looks like you're viral every single time. It dissuades people from ever starting because they think that they have to be successful immediately and every time. They have to hit a home run every time. I don't wake up and try and hit a home run. I wake up and hit a single. I wake up and I try to add value to someone's life with my creativity, fill my soul, and be passionate about and love what I do. So by you hiding that video, it's making your profile look very polished. Yeah, but it's also not encouraging and it doesn't bring people in. It doesn't bring people alongside of you and go, here's, here's how you do it. Here's the ups, here's the downs, here's the days that are incredible. And here's the days that feel like you poured your soul into something and people didn't care. Those are the kind of things that people need to see. Please stop. Please stop deleting content that doesn't do well. I am 